Hi again, and welcome back to Great Western Building Systems. I'm Eric, still stuck here at home. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. In our last two installments of the Building Erection Series, we went over the unloading of the building and verifying that the anchor bolts and the foundation were prepped and ready to go. Uh, in this video, we're gonna start by hanging the steel. A little safety before we get started. If using a hoist, make sure that, this is kind of self-explanatory, but make sure that no one is standing directly under the piece being raised. It's also a good idea to wear a hard hat uh, when setting the heavy iron. Uh, personally, I prefer uh, what we call a packer's hat, or some people call it a bump cap. I think bump cap's a little bit more, like on Amazon, you call it a bump cap. Uh, these are lower profile than a traditional hard hat, and they're not as cumbersome. So uh, I like these, they don't give the same protection, but they allow you to stick your head up through girts and stuff like that. Either way, you and your helpers should be sure uh, to protect yourselves. Uh, at Great West, we recommend starting the building at a braced bay whenever possible. Uh, for buildings uh, with columns that weigh less than 250 pounds, it may be possible to set them in place by hand uh, as, as we're doing here. However, if you don't have the help required to do this, hoisting equipment should be used. Uh, there are a lot of options when it comes to equipment for this, and if the job is small and it's not real, real high, uh, a simple material lift is probably gonna be suitable. Uh, for larger buildings uh, or taller buildings, a telehandler should be used. As soon as the column is placed by, on the bolts, the, uh, the anchor bolts should be uh, snugly tightened. No reason to torque these down at this point because some adjusting is probably going to be necessary. Continuing on to the next column of the same bay, uh, once you have those two in place, it's time to install the girts and the X bracing uh, if your building is equipped with that. Refer to the wall elevation plan for the part number of the girts you will need. You're going to want to install the girts using the supplied uh, half by one and a half inch silver A307. Uh, hardware with washers on either side. If, if girts are going to be lapped with, with the next frame of the column, uh, we'll need to remove these bolts later to add the lap girt for the next bay. But right now we want them tight so that we can properly plumb and square this bay of the building. The wall elevation, uh, as we're showing here, will tell you the lap length for the girts and for the purlins. Uh, the purlins obviously on the, on the roof plan. Uh, the measurement is from the end of the girt to the center line of the column. Once you have a bay complete, use ratchet straps or the building bracing system to bring the columns plumb diagonally. Uh, you can check for the plumbness using a long level. The level should not be placed on the web of the column. Instead, use the edge of the straight flange uh, for checking in and out. Uh, for in and out plumbness of the frame into the building or out of the building, uh, the level should be placed on the center line of the outside flange. Once you have at least four columns standing with the girts installed, we can move on to raising the rafters in those sections. Usually it's best to go ahead and install all of the wall columns and girts first. Once located, the rafters should be spliced together using the gold colored A325 bolts while the frames are on the ground. Uh, for buildings with spans 50 feet or under, a spreader bar should not be necessary. Leave the top two bolt holes open for eye bolts or shackles, specifically designed for lifting and rated for the appropriate weight. Lift the complete rafter section into place. Have a helper control the end of the rafter with a tag line to prevent swaying or unexpected movements of the rafter. When the rafter is in place, you can keep moving down the line installing purlins as you go. Make sure that you have the girts turned correctly to ensure proper nesting. One flange is wider than the other. I've covered this before, but it's important. Uh, you have a one eighth or a two and one eighth or a three and one eighth inch flange and a two and an, or, and a two and three eighths or a three and three eighths, depending on the purlin size or the girt size. Uh, so they do fit, uh, they're reversible and they, they fit correctly. It's also important to make sure that you're not overusing the A307 hardware. Those are the silver bolts for the purlins. You should verify with the erection drawings 
but generally speaking, you'll only need to install two bolts per girt clip in a diagonal fashion. The bolts are stronger than the purlin material, so more than two is usually not necessary. Uh, we supply four bolt holes only for convenience. Uh, the reason for this is because of the manufacturing process, sometimes those clips are twisted a little bit, they're not always perfect, and it's easy to get at least two of those bolt holes in there in either direction. Uh, getting all four in can be a chore, but uh, I've seen it on jobs where people put them all in. Uh, if you wanna do that, that's fine. Let us know, we're happy to send you the bolts to do it, they don't cost very much. Um, or you can always just run down to the hardware store, but only two are required. Once that's done, you can also use the X bracing if your building's equipped with it to pull the rafters into alignment. This really shouldn't be necessary if the columns are already done. The building itself, the building will take care of itself. Uh, to check the rafter, uh, there's a few methods for that in the erection manual. The way I like to do it is just to check the outside flanges of the end walls on the end wall columns. Uh, that'll tell you if the building needs to go one way or the other, but usually it's not a problem. Well, I hope that you find this helpful when you're erecting your building. If you need more help, please give us a call and one of our team members should be able to help you troubleshoot and answer any questions you may have. We're all working from home these days and we do have the staff and the phones and everything so we're not neglecting any of our customers. Uh, build great and thank you again for taking the time to watch. If you'd like to keep up with our future videos, please subscribe and you'll be notified of future installments.